A lot of new makeup products have come out lately, so I've slowly, surely been placing multiple Sephora orders, and I'm gonna go over all of what's new at Sephora that I picked up. Also, at the end, I have a few items that I got sent in PR that are also new in Sephora, so I thought I'd share that with you as well. Let's get into it. I am wearing very mismatched makeup right now because I put all of this on today and um, some of this stuff didn't match. <laughs> but anyways, let's get into this new concealer that I picked up from Say. I've used this, this is probably the product that I've used the most out of this entire video. This is like my third or fourth time trying this. The words on the sticker are super blurry and I know it's not my vision, but I think it's called the Hydra Beam Concealer. I got mine in shade two. This is a really natural and lightweight concealer. If I'm being honest, I am not the biggest fan of it. I don't find it to be very flattering or smoothing under my eyes because it is so hydrating and it almost emphasizes the texture on the under eyes. If you like a really light concealer though, you like that hydrating factor, this might be for you. But for the style of makeup that I typically do, I don't find that it plumps the under eye enough and it doesn't give enough coverage as well. Like every time I wear it, I just feel like my eyes look sunken in, which can be helped with a color corrector, but it just has to do mostly with the consistency of this product. So I have not been loving this, but I'm still gonna continue playing with it, seeing how it reacts with different powders, but so far this has not been my favorite. The next product is the LYS No Limits Cream Bronzer Stick in the shade Motivate. Okay, so first of all, I wish I had gotten a darker shade, but I am paranoid with cream bronzers. I typically like a lighter bronze anyways, but this is a bit light. I was able to make it work, but unfortunately this is a little too creamy for me. I just, I'm a little scared to use this in the summer heat if I'm being honest. The stick itself Self, literally melted with the touch of my skin which normally I'm a fan of but this is like almost too much it, it just got really really messy really quick you can already see those indentations here I'm having a hard time putting this cap back on without creating a dent or a mess with this so I can't believe I'm saying this but I think this is too creamy it just got everywhere it's really messy a little goes a long way with this I will say that but I don't know about this for the summertime I will come back to this product in the winter because I think I will have a better time with this but I can just see this product slipping and sliding on my face as always though with LYS Beauty they have a lot of really great colors. It also is a really great price. So I'm not knocking this yet, but I can already tell I am not going to like this in the summer. Okay, I have two powders that I picked up. This first one is straight up weird. So this is the Refi Skin Finish water-based powder. So this is not the first powder that I've tried that's like this, but basically what it is, since it's water-based, it actually feels wet when you're putting it on the skin. It is the oddest, oddest sensation. So it doesn't make my brush wet or anything, but literally when I put it on, it feels super duper wet on my face. Honestly, the finish of it is not bad. It's not the most blurring powder that I've ever used, but it looks really lightweight on the skin, which I think is gonna make this really great for tinted moisturizers and the lighter weight products that are super popular right now. So two brands that I've tried, there's one brand that I, I can't remember the name of it, but I've tried one that was not helpful to you at all. But then also Becca came out with a product kind of similar to this. But of the three that I've tried, this is by far the most wet feeling, but I really do like the way that it looks on the skin. So I need to continue using this because I only use it on half my face today. It does not beat my Maybelline Fit Me powder. I feel like that's the most blurring powder ever. But in terms of a really lightweight and refreshing feeling powder on this skin, I do like this. I'm definitely intrigued. I need to test this out more. But the only word I can use to describe this product is weird. Oh, and also wet. It just feels wet. It is a water-based powder. I don't understand. <laughs> you just, you gotta try it to understand. So the other powder that I got, I was not gonna pick it up, but I think I had at least five of you asking me to pick it up because she is so pricey. So I got this from Westman Atelier. This is the Vital Pressed 
skincare powder. I'm going to be honest, at this current moment, I don't know too much about the powder. I just know a lot of you told me it was supposed to be really good and I trust you guys the most, so I definitely listened. And there were two shades I was between, the translucent shade and there also is a pinky shade. So I got the shade Pink Bubble because I don't have a pink pressed powder. I thought that would be unique. What is nice about Westman Atelier is they come with a little tiny baby dust bag and then of course super luxurious packaging if you are familiar with Westman Atelier and it is a very light pink and I've seen light pink powders like this trending it's supposed to be color correcting I use it on this side of my face and I could definitely see the pink hue which I don't necessarily think is the prettiest on my skin tone I think if you have a cool complexion this would look really great for me, something a little bit more salmon-y or yellow I think would look a bit better, but there are a lot of times where I do like a pinky rosy look, and in that case, this would be perfect. I like the way that this set the makeup. It's definitely more blurring than the Refi. I put it over top of the Refi and it kind of smoothed out those areas more than the Refi could, so it sits on the skin really pretty. I need to continue testing this color because I don't know if I'm just not used to it or maybe Maybe it's not the most flattering on my skin tone, but I like the powder itself. I just gotta get used to that color. But I'm really excited about this because I could feel the energy in the air from you guys with how excited you were for me to try this powder. So I got it and I will continue to update you guys on it as I use it some more. I picked up two cheek products. So the first one, I picked up something from the YSL New Line and surprisingly I've never even tried anything from this line before. And I was just adding random things to my cart when I saw this. So this is the Lip and Cheek balmy tint in the shade New Pinch. This was by far the most light and natural color and I feel like I might have made a mistake because this doesn't give me too much. So the consistency of it is definitely very balmy. When I put it on the cheek, I mean I didn't get too much from it, which is fine. I mean that's a style of makeup right there. But I didn't really like the way it looked on my lips either. It just looked kind of chalky on my lips. So the only time that I would wear this product really is if I'm doing a no makeup makeup look. I think this looks really pretty. But if I have any sort of coverage on my face, any medium or higher coverage foundation and concealer. I cannot use this. This would be eaten up by that coverage. But you know, if I'm wearing a skin tint or something really, really natural, then this would be very nice. But they do have darker colors as well. So I wonder if maybe I should have got that. But I don't dislike it. I like the way that it looks, but I don't think it's as versatile as being able to be used on the lips and cheeks. It just, it didn't look or feel right on my lips. But it was pretty on the cheek. I did like the way that it blended out and it felt quite hydrating as well. So we'll see. And then I picked up this new Redimension Hydra Powder Blush by RMS Beauty. I don't know, it looked really interesting to me. It says this lightweight bouncy gel to powder blush blends seamlessly for a sheer multi-dimensional radiance and long-lasting color. It feels quite luxurious. It kind of reminds me of Natasha Denona packaging. I picked up the shade Maiden's Blush. How beautiful is this? This is the most pretty kind of bronzy sunburnt color. If you like that sunburnt kind of look, you will love this. Now it does have a lot of dimension to it. So if you have texture or pores on your cheeks, it will be emphasized. A way that you can kind of help tame that is to put a matte blush down first and then use this as more so of a blush topper. This is pigmented enough though. I've used it as the entire blush on my cheek and I think it's really pretty. But if you are insecure about your texture, this might not be for you. But I love this shade and I think this looks really beautiful. Okay, let's move on to the eyes. <laughs> Randomly, I picked up a product from Too Faced. I've heard nobody talked about this because you know what? Who is even into Too Faced these days? <laughs> but Curiosity Killed Me. This is the laminating brow wax. I don't even like to wear my brows in feather brow style but here I am. I was curious and so this is interesting. It's a little bit more of a lightweight brow wax if you ask me. I don't care for the spoolie that much. I don't think, I don't know, it just doesn't brush the hairs the prettiest but the product itself I actually do like because it starts off sticky 
right? Kind of like the ABH brow gel, not the brow gel, the brow wax and the Patrick Ta, but it does eventually dry down to have a lighter weight finish. So if you don't like how sticky those brow waxes make your brows feel, this does dry down and it feels like a normal brow gel. So you get a lot of control. I have no color in my eyebrow right now. I got this shape simply from using this. So I do like it, but there's one thing that I'm kind of unsure about. I feel like it did pill up because I did use a uh, foundation down before and I got some pilling happening in my eyebrow. So I don't know if this is a project that maybe it just disagreed with that specific foundation or if you can't apply foundation before using that and in that case then I definitely won't like this product because it is in my routine to put foundation down first so I'm gonna have to continue testing that to see what's up with it but in terms of the actual quality of the product I like it it's definitely a more everyday friendly way to get that laminated style brow look and then you guys already saw this because I did a review on this already but I mean it came with these orders and this is also new this is the Pat McGrath lab mini eyeshadow palette in midnight voyage I mean I've done two videos dedicated to this little tiny palette already it is $29 it is not a good value but I think it's a great way to test out Pat McGrath without breaking the bank all at once five of the six shades in here are already existing so if you are a Pat McGrath collector there's a high chance that you have almost all of the shades and the one shade that is new is this one right here it's not exactly a showstopper kind of shade it's a beautiful formula and whatnot but it's very very dupable so here's the thing with this. The quality in here is beautiful. It is the exact same quality that you'll get in the Mothership $130 palettes. But the only catch here is it's not exactly luxury, which is what Pat McGrath usually screams. The packaging itself, it feels a little cheap and plasticky. Mine sounds a little squeaky. And the amount of product that you get is absolutely minuscule. So $29, you get three grams of product overall. That is not a lot. Now I'm unbothered as somebody who is not gonna hit pan on anything in my entire life. I don't care about how much product I get, but if you plan on using this every single day, then this is something that you might want to rethink. But overall, the quality of the shadows are really great. I personally really love the color story here. The only thing I was investigating was this aubergine color because I don't like it in the full size. And it worked out beautifully, this one in here, beautifully on this eye, and it was super patchy on this eye. So I'm still investigating this dang aubergine shade. I don't know. I think it's better, but I don't know. <laughs> but anyways, I do recommend this if you are interested in testing and trying Pat McGrath. But there are some drawbacks that might want to be considered. But I did do this look right here. I'm using one of my all-time favorite shades, Eleganza, which is in this palette. So stunning. I have the plum in the outer corner. And then I also use that plum aubergine shade to create a little mini wing that I didn't catch on camera. But really a pretty easy look. And it's not going to break the bank all at once. Moving on to the last product. So the last product that I picked up from like my own money is from Fenty and this is the Pout Sickle Hydrating Lip Stain. I got mine in the shade number two, Zesty Bestie. I did pick a bright shade so I'm not wearing it right now but you'll see it in the demo. So when you first put it down you're like whoo! She bright, she pigmented, but it does spread out very much to have that kind of I just ate a cherry popsicle effect to the lips. I think it's really, really pretty and I really like the formula of it. They describe it as a hydrating lip stain and I wholeheartedly agree with that statement. It really does feel like a hydrating lip stain, which I think is such huge step in the makeup. Well, maybe not huge, but it's a big step in the makeup industry. Again, it's more modernized technology now that we're using to create these products and yes it is a lip stain that is hydrating and I really like it so if that's what you're looking for a lip stain that's not gonna dry out your lips they did a good job with that okay so I have kind of three more products I mean more than three but let me just share with you these were sent to me in PR but they are brand new to Sephora so I wanted to show you the first thing I got sent to me was was the Tarte Tartlet Tubing Mascara. So happy to see tubing mascaras becoming popular because tubing mascaras are waterproof mascara that is easier to take off. So these have all of the characteristics of a waterproof mascara and that if they get wet, especially in the summer, 
it's not going to smudge. If you have straight lashes like me, they hold a curl a lot better and they're easier to take off most of the time. With just water they come off. Well, the waterproof mascaras aren't easy to take off. That is what makes tubing mascaras better is that they are easy to take off. So I'm really excited about this. I didn't love the way that this made my lower lashes look, but even with tubing mascaras, I needed to give it a couple more uses, but I do love what it gave my upper lashes. I don't have too terribly much to work with, you guys, and I feel like it made my eyelashes look really, really nice. I don't have any falsies on right now. I did curl my lashes, and while my lashes aren't as curled as they first started off with, they still are holding that lift. So, so far, so good with this tubing mascara. I haven't taken it off yet, so I need to see if it's easy to take off but in first impression I like it I got a lip product sent to me from Fenty skin this is my first time ever trying anything from Fenty skin and this is so beautiful this is the cherry treat conditioning lip oil so it does have a very subtle pinkish reddish tint to the lips nothing too crazy it just brings a little bit of color back to the lips and so far I like it I mean I think it adds such a pretty gloss to the lips so it's great for putting on in the summer it hydrates the lips and it smells really good mm. I mean it's a very very strong fragrance so if you can't stand fragrance and you might not like it but seriously whew, I love the smell it smells like candy so I really like this conditioning lip oil I think it's a great cross between a lip gloss and a lip oil so I'm wearing it right now I have a little bit of Pat McGrath done on done lip pencil underneath and I put this on top and it looks like I'm wearing a gloss and my lips are super Super duper hydrated so very happy with that now the last products that I have to share with you were from benefit a number of you asked me if I was picking up the new benefit blushes because they came out with 10 new shades of their boxed blushes and originally I was not going to but they did send them to me in PR and I do love benefit cheek products it was simply a matter of I don't need any cheek products <laughs> so spending that much money for an individual just didn't make sense for me and then lo and behold you guys oh my goodness benefit sent me the entire line so I thought I'd swatch them with you guys so you can see the colors if you're interested so I'm gonna zoom you in we're gonna turn the lights down and let's just take a look at the colors that we have here so the first one and by the way if you haven't seen the boxed packaging before this is what it looks like so this is the shade dandelion this is not new there's two shades that came out that aren't new so dandelion is a baby pink blush and it's a satin finish this shows up better on the cheeks, I promise. <laughs> and then they also sent me a hula, which I'm excited about. This is not new, but this is a very coveted bronzer. And I do have this in palettes, but not in individual form. So I'm excited to have that. And the rest here are new. So we have Butterfly. Ooh, really creamy feeling. This is a golden orange blush and it has a soft shimmer finish. This is Java. I'm not going to swatch it because it won't work for me. This is a rosy mocha blush with a natural matte finish. I'm going to give this away to somebody with a deeper complexion who can get more use out of it than me. Then we have Pom Pom, which is a pomegranate rose blush. This one looks really gorgeous, but again, not for my skin tone, so I'm just going to put that over to the side. We have Peachin. Peachin looks so pretty. This is a golden peach blush. It's a soft shimmer finish. Here is Sunny, which is a warm coral blush. Looks like that. That one looks very pretty as well. I mean, all of them look pretty, though. Okay, so Moon I'm going to have to throw away because it is a hot mess express. Um, it's gonna start breaking more, but it's a really beautiful kind of rich berry shade. Ooh, Krista looks fun and bright. Krista is described as a strawberry pink blush. Oh yes, for the summer, love that. Tara right here is a golden brick red blush. You can see it has some shimmer there. Not gonna swatch that. Shelly is a warm seashell pink blush. Warm pink blushes are typically what I kind of use the most. That looks beautiful. And then the very last shade that I have to show you from these Benefit blushes is Willa. This one is my favorite. It's a soft neutral rose blush. 
which looks like this. So those are the new blushes from Benefit that I get to show you that just arrived at Sephora that I know a number of you guys were excited about. So I'm excited that I could share these with you. And if you don't know, I am a huge fan of the Benefit Single Blush Formulas. I have reviewed their blush and cheek products for years because I think they do a great job with the formulas. I didn't need any because I have all of their palettes, but I'm very happy that these ended up being sent to me because I know I'm going to use them. I love them. They're a great, reliable formula. So anyways, that is all I have for today's haul. All of these are brand new items at Sephora, so a lot of these were first impressions. If you don't know, periodically, I do product updates, and I definitely will have as many of these items as I can in my speed review slash product updates video as I continue to use these products more. I'll have everything linked down below in the description box if you're interested in purchasing anything. They are affiliated so just keep that in mind. And yeah, thank you guys for liking this video and being subscribed to my channel and I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.